First up, award-winning news anchor Don Lemon. <laughs> Don has been a dear friend of mine for a very long time, and I often joke with him uh, that he has a, a unique ability to attract headlines. <laughs> and this past week alone, Don has been at the top of a lot of people's news feeds over the headline-making interview he did with one of the most powerful and wealthy, wealthiest people in the world, Elon Musk. Many have called Don bold, and today he joins us in a daytime exclusive, his first sit-down interview since the entire Elon Musk interview has aired. And it's been an interesting thing. People ask me all the time, can I objectively uh, interview a friend, right? Because it's your friend. I used to watch Arsenio and Eddie Murphy, and I always felt like we were left out while they were talking. <laughs> uh, yes, I can, and we're about to get it started. Don Lemon, come on out! journalism coat on. I'm like, yes, I can interview my friend. And then my friend brings out flowers. Well played, well played. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Thank you so much for these hi, beautiful... Hi, Hi, my... Hi. Hi. I've been crying for the last five minutes. I saw you walk out. I am so proud of you. Yeah. I am so proud of you. When I... I watch the show every day. I watch the show every day, and I was like, I told, I was telling the, the folks in the back, the producers, I said, I know Tamara's mad at me because I, then when I hear that music, you know, shine, yeah. whatever, and I'm like, I texted her one day, and I'm, I said, you shine, B. And I was like, <laughs> I hope she didn't get mad, but I meant that with love. Are I, you, Tamara, first of all, I love you. You know I love so you. Much. you know Thank it. you yeah. so much for doing this. Um, this is a great woman. Yeah. This is a good woman. No. Wait, this is about you. Don't... Yes. Okay, so, because everybody, you know, last night, said, can you interview your friend? Can you interview your friend? Yes. I said, of course I can interview my friend. Um, and I can do it objectively. And I'll tell you, I remember... We, and by the way, we've not talked about this. We've not... We text each other pretty much all day, every day. But we've we not talked... We have not this. talked about this. No. And we are live. And I'll tell you, I remember... For, for a couple of things to clear up. Elon Musk was never your boss. Never. You never worked for Elon Musk. No. The show that you had created was going to air on a number of places, YouTube, right. in addition to X, which is formerly Twitter. Right. So right. that's the first headline that people got wrong, yeah. that Elon Musk uh, fired you or canceled no. you. No. He was a distribution partner. Just like your show is distributed right. on different networks and different platforms, yeah. he was just a partner in that. And that was just one thing. But it was originally, it's always been our intention for the show to go to as many places as possible. Uh, on YouTube, on iHeartRadio, on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, and on and on. So you can get it wherever you get streaming content or wherever you get podcasts. Yeah. You can you can get this show. And thank you all for tuning in and signing yeah. up. Yeah. Go to YouTube, go to Spotify, go to iHeart, and sign up. So it's 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 so there. That, and you're that's responding. the first thing. Okay, so we got that straight. So yeah. going back to how this all started. Yeah. I remember you texted me and you said, "Hey, I've been contacted by X. Yeah. And I'm thinking about you know." taking my show and let it air or run on X. I did not answer. You and I like... normally always have something to say. Because I didn't know, right? right? Because X has been under a lot of scrutiny, right. both the financials of it and also uh, the moral compass Toxic. Of, it, of, it, of Twitter. Which yeah. you know, I'm, I'm not a big Twitter person. Even before it was X, I really <clears> wasn't because I did feel that it was a very toxic place. Yep. And I go on occasionally, but I, I limit it. That's my own personal yep. belief. But you said, okay, this might be a great place to go on and put my, my show. Well, Why? Because uh, I had gotten off of Twitter for, you know, and I would engage occasionally, right, yeah. like you. Um, and I couldn't go on because it was so toxic. But I had been approached by not only Elon Musk, but by his management team and other people who are in, you know, the business and who know him. The Wall Street Journal reports that he reached out to yeah. you and wanted to engage in a conversation. Well, he tweeted, Don oh, Lemon, right. bring He's your show. You know, I think... Two or three oh, times. I have that tweet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, we have the tweet, I believe, yeah. where he said, you know, have you considered doing your show on this platform? Maybe worth the try. Audience is much bigger. Yeah. So he courted you publicly. He courted me publicly, but there was another tweet before that, and he said, maybe, you know, people, well, he said on the left, and that was part of the interview where right. I, I said, 
why'd you say I'm on the left? But he said people on the left um, should bring your show like Don Lemon and Rachel Maddow to okay. X. And so, you know, they reached out to me and I, and I said no for a long time. As you know, I took the summer off. Mm -hmm. um, and I said no. And then when, when Linda Yaccarino became the CEO, when they hired her, she was from NBC, mm -hmm. um, we started negotiating, they started calling me again. And I said, look, um, I will only do this if I can be me on this platform. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I've never not known you to not be you. Right. So they didn't, and I, and I said to them, and occasionally that will mean yeah. that I have to criticize the person who owns this platform because if I'm going to be on here, yeah. then I'm going to okay. have to do my, do what I do, and, and I'm, I'm going to have to be a journalist, right. and, and I'm going to have to because he talks about DEI yeah. Yeah, yeah. and tra anti-trans okay, so and all that stuff. I know that you've always had a strong identity of who you are, especially professionally. The the, the departure from CNN, right? right. And, and being fired from CNN, I know you tweeted out even that, you know, your agent was contacted and you weren't contacted. Some of those details that came out. But when you go through something like that, I think you can either uh, build your confidence or tear you down. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like to me that experience built your confidence. So you're going into this next relationship with your eyes wide open. With, uh, yes. Right. As, as they say in the South. Yeah. You, uh, you knew I was a snake before you picked me up, right? <laughs> <laughs> so again, I'm not saying he's, a, you know, he's a snake, but I'm saying I knew what I was dealing with. Right. It was a, a person who is, you know, not a, a bit erratic. Mm -hmm. So uh, yes, I knew that. But what I wanted to do was, they said they wanted to bring um, some credibility to the platform. Mm. Did they, they use that word credibility they, to the platform? Well, well, they wanted to. They, he said, he said, I wanted, I want to uh, have voices from. All different from all different stuff. Okay, all different perspectives. so he said, I don't know, he said, he said, Elon Musk says, <laughs> yeah. you know, okay, I agreed to an interview with Don because he asked. And I thought to myself, well, that's, yeah. you know, Jordan Manning, investigative reporter. 90% <laughs> of the time that you get an interview is because you do what? You ask. You ask. So I thought that was a weird right. flex on right. his part. Right. Okay, so he says, well, Don asked, and I did it for Don right. because he asked. Had there been any rules established for nope. this interview? So no. you were ready to ask him about any and everything. Any, and he and said everything. that was okay. He said it was okay. So you decide to ask him about using ketamine. Ketamine is a psychedelic <laughs> drug that Elon Musk has said he used to treat his depression. Right. Through, it is a a, under a doctor's under a doc. So it's a prescribed drug yeah. under a doctor's uh, uh, supervision. But what we also know is it's reportedly very popular amongst people in the tech world because there are folks who believe it enlightens your mind. Yeah. I am not saying that that is why he does it or anybody, but he is admitted to a prescribed treatment based mm -hmm. on some of the mental health issues that he's talked about. Right. Here's a little brief of that, com that conversation. Do you feel like you ever abuse it? I don't think so. If you use too much ketamine, you can't really get work done. Yeah. So I have a lot of work. So I'm, I'm typically putting in like, you know, 16 hour days. That's normal for me. And it's, it's, it's rare for me to even take off a weekend day. So I don't really have like, you know, a situation where I can be not mentally acute for an extended period of time. Like I can't, I can't really get wasted with when, uh, cause I can't get my work done. So how often do you take it? Um, well, it's, it'd be like it's a small amount once every other week or something like that. I actually thought that was a substantive exchange. Yeah, it was. Ketamine is in the news a lot. You don't have a lot of platforms that can talk about it. Right. He's being transparent, it seemed. Right. He's talking about his treatment. Yeah. I thought that was fair game. It's a, this, this is a journalist, okay? <laughs> because that was one of the yeah. things that we, we actually agreed upon. And Tamara, I thought his answer his was answer great. His answer was good, but it took him a while to get to it. And people said, why did you keep following up? I was like, because I was, because he has talked about this. And I was waiting yeah. for him to get to that. And finally he got okay. to it. But let me just, let me share something okay. with you. Um, I have suffered from depression, right? I, I take an antidepressant now that's Wellbutrin or something like yeah. that. So I'm very transparent about that. It helped me get through the summer, you know, after losing summer a of job. being fired, Of yes. being fired. Um, and so, and, but before, I had, that's, I do talk therapy now. But I've also, my doctor has also done guided therapy mm. with me on drugs. Yeah. I don't know if I've ever, it's ever been ketamine, but I think he's, he says, you know, you should try other things than SSRI. Also, I, I don't know if you've done it, it has helped people with PTSD yeah. when you use yeah. those drugs, but you have to do it under a doctor's care. So and you're I trying said, to have, again, an enlightened conversation. I, when did it start to go wrong? Because I know mm. in an interview, I 
I can see when a person's vein starts to go, and, and I'm like, oh, get, boy. And their ears start to get yeah, red. Yeah, oh, I can, I can see that one question. I'm like, well, this is not what either of us wanted. Well, he said it was very personal, and I said, well, the only reason I'm talking about this is because you put it out into the public domain. But I think it's but mostly around... But what was around, the question when you thought, oh, boy, this I think is it not was going well? I think it was around the DEI stuff, so diversity, equity, Diversity, equity, and, equity and, inclusion. and inclusion. You felt like having the conversation about race was not what he was expecting. About race and gender and trans issues and, and those sorts of things, because right. he tweets about them a lot. A lot. Okay, so the statement from Elon Musk and X, um, their decision to pull on your agreement, um, because they, they pull the agreement, it said, mm -hmm. like any enterprise, we reserve the right to make a decision about our business partnerships and our careful consideration. X decided not to enter into a commercial partnership with the show. That's the statement they said. You know what I thought was funny? Right. Because in pain, I always laugh. When he called you Veruca Salt, from the, <laughs> so oh, he did. Elon That's Musk right. has been insulting Don. Some of the stuff I won't even read because I'm just not going to read it. Um, but but he said you were like Veruca Salt from Elon, from, that you were asking for everything. And I but, thought, well, who doesn't ask for everything in a negotiation? <laughs> I, I mean, he's a shrewd and smart businessman. And to criticize you for asking, I think they said you asked for like $5 million and $8 million up front and whatever those details are, you asked for a Tesla truck. I would have asked for a fleet of Teslas. <laughs> um, so I didn't understand that part. Well, I was like, he's mad at you for being a good businessman? <laughs> <laughs> here's the thing. Uh, that, that was a is, funny tweet. You got to admit it. But Baruch it's, uh, well, at good. least we have on the same color, yeah. right? I don't, know, I don't know who that is. But I laugh. Let, let me let me just say this. It's ob it's an obvious distraction, right? And yeah. they're trying to to sully by reputation. They're trying to smear me. But so how is that sullying like that you were being a good business person? Well, all of that is uh, it's not. You know, it's ridiculous, right? So I, I don't want to get into that. That's you know, not, it's not true. But here's the thing, you're right. When people negotiate all the time, and maybe they're not used to like yeah. talent negotiations, I'm not saying that any of that's true, but people ask for a lot of things. I don't mean you're gonna get it. At the, right. In the end. But, <laughs> I, I right. mean, yeah, I could go on and on again. If you, if you don't because ask, you ain't you, gonna get right, it. We say closed mouths don't get fed. <laughs>